Yes, hello everyone. I'm Stephen Stern, partner in the law firm of David Au, David Au, Siegel and Stern, Long Island's elder law, special needs and estate planning firm. Proud and excited to bring you senior counsel here on LI News Radio. And uh, very pleased to welcome our special guest today, Tony Riviere. Uh, Tony Riviere of Stuff Seniors Need. And Tony, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. All right, good to see you. And uh, Tony, um, given your personal experience and the experience that you've had in, in working with an important organization here on Long Island, I uh, have an awful lot of information to share with, uh, with older adults and, and their families here, uh, here on Long Island. Uh, so maybe we could begin by, uh, by talking about yourself, your background, and, and a little bit about the organization that you're working with. Sure. Um, my, my life really changed forever. It was January 9, 2012. Um, I was at work, and I got a text from my brother that uh, mom was unconscious but breathing and going to Mather. And at that point in time, that's really when my life changed forever because I was the quintessential unprepared caregiver at this point. Um, mom had been declining physically, you know, for, for a few years, but I never imagined that um, it would be as swift and as sudden as that. So when I, I reached the point when, you know, I, I got that text and we found out she had taken a heart attack and she needed now an extensive amount of care, um, you know, I said I was totally unprepared. I had no power of attorney. I didn't have a health care proxy. Um, I had no idea what a medical directive was. Uh, worse, with, with the, the cost of nursing home care, I had no idea where her financial inf information was. I didn't know what bank she was with. I had no idea where her retirement was, nothing. So when you're in this position, you are, and it's unfortunate, it's just the way it is, you're in the position where you have to focus almost more on the financial aspects of caregiving than you do on the medical aspects. Of course, we were concerned, you know, making sure that mom was getting all the care she needed and, you know, to, to enable her to live as full a life as possible after, after recovering from the heart attack. But we were also, you know, we, we knew what the cost of the nursing home was. There was no way that we, you know, my brother and I could afford that. There was no way she could afford that. So we were running around and, you know, you know visiting with social workers, lawyers, doctors, uh, notaries, all, all, all these types of things. And we were putting more emphasis on gathering her financial information at one point than we were with, um, you know, making sure she was getting the care she needed. I mean, we refer to that in our office as the crisis situation. And, you know, too many families, you know, they feel like they perhaps are the only ones in that situation. But I can certainly tell you that it is by far the norm. Uh, rather than the exception. Yeah, that's, uh, that's unfortunately what I found out because, for example, when I didn't have the power of attorney, you know, it's a chicken and the egg scenario, Steve. You, you, know, you need to get five years worth of bank records to apply for, for Medicaid, but the bank won't give you the bank records unless you have the power of attorney. Yeah. So you're in that chicken and the egg scenario. Thank God, like you said, I mean, the social workers at the nursing home were well aware that this is probably 99.9% .9 of the time the way it works. So, um, you know, they were able to work with us to, you know, get the legal power of attorney. So I was able to start the process. Yeah, it is uh, extremely difficult and, and frustrating time. And mm -hmm. as you said, when you should really as a family be focusing on type of care, level of care, the best place for care and maybe hopefully focusing on a discharge plan. Uh, too often it becomes a financial question and then you're, you're scrambling and, and trying to play catch up. Uh, it can be very, very frustrating. Again, we call it in our office uh, the, the crisis situation. Yeah. Um, you know, fortunately, I have to say that um, one, one of the best tips I could give is that if you're in this situation and, you know, you, you have to deal with a particular institution like a bank, try and speak to the branch manager and, you know, just them only. Because after a little while, um, after my third or fourth trip in there explaining everything, I didn't need to make trips anymore. And it was so much easier. You know, I would call up the branch manager and just tell her, it's Tony the Medicaid boy. And she knew exactly what was going on. <laughs> yeah. She knew what the story was. Um, because, you know, just as a little aside with, um, you know, that bank record thing, you know, you got to go back five years for the Medicaid application. When we got the first run, um, two years were blank. You know, we only had three years mm. and no one knew what was going on. And as it turned out, mom had had to change bank accounts within that one branch. No one was able to figure out why that happened. It just 
did. So it was like another one of the hiccups. But because of the fact you're dealing with just one person and not telling your story to five different people, um, you know, we were able to get it resolved. Yeah. Uh, listening to Senior Counsel here on LI News Radio, I'm Stephen Stern, partner in the law firm of David Dow, David Dow, Siegel and Stern. David Dow, David Dow, Siegel and Stern, Long Island's elder law special needs and estate planning firm where the best advice leads to lasting solutions. If you have elder law and estate planning questions, you can give us a call at 631-234-3030. That's 631 631- Two three four thirty thirty, or you can get us on the web at www.daviddowlaw.com. And we're speaking with Tony Riviere uh, of Stuff Seniors Need. Tony, if uh, if listeners have questions for you, they can contact you how? Sure. Um, the website is stuffseniorsneed.com, and there's a contact me page. Um, where you can send any questions that you need. Um, I get, I would say, four to five a week throughout the country from people. Anything relating to how to get free dental care, uh, free cell phones, um, free hearing aids. Uh, and it's one of the things that I, I really love about what I do because um, – I reached the point where I had started accumulating so much information. I had just learned how to build a website, and I thought this would be beneficial because everyone is coming to me asking this stuff. And it's a situation where it kind of took off. And when you get a, when you get you know inquiries from somebody, um, a few months ago, a lady from Ohio emailed me. She's like, you know, my, my, my mother, she, she, she needs dentures. She can't afford them. And I was able to work with her to find a program through Ohio Dental Association. So that you know, it, she was on a waiting list for about three months, but she's getting the free pair of dentures. <laughs> you know, the, the the most amazing thing about this process is that between government and, and charitable nonprofit organizations, it is incredible the amount of resources that that really is out there to help not only the seniors. You're really helping the caregivers, though. You're helping my generation. I'm 43. So when you have to make sure that mom and dad are okay, but at the same time, you know, you have a spouse and children to take care of, too. That's why it's called the sandwich generation. So the resources are there. It's just you need to know where to look for them. And that's why... um, I, I started the website just to, based on my own personal experience. So Stuff Seniors Need has been an ongoing uh, operation mm-hmm. of yours. How, how long have you been going? Um, I started it March of 2012 um, when, when life started to calm down a little after the uh, you know m- mom, mom's her heart attack at that point in time I started to just you know I I had all this information already compiled so it it wasn't a case of where I needed to like go out and do research you know I mean it was already there so I that's why I started it and so now you're sharing it with others and that has to be very gratifying absolutely and you know when you get those emails from people saying you know thank you mom's getting that free pair of dentures she needs you know thanks for the advice um mom got the free hearing aid you know so when you get the the the, it's very gratifying and so when someone uh, makes an inquiry do you do you speak with them? Is it information that you get to them uh, by email over the web? How is uh, how is the information given? How is it received? It's typically email based. I will get a uh, I'll get the inquiry via email, and um, a, a lot of times I can tell it's a senior who who's sending it because they'll just say uh, you know I need a free pair of dentures. Well, where are you from? You know, <laughs> things like that. So what I, I wound up doing, actually, I did the research and for, for the free dental programs, I actually now have it broken down by state where I researched every one of the states and to, to figure out exactly how. So there's a separate page on my site where I, you know, free dental care in Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, and, you know, I went through to Wyoming. So so that's uh, that's labor intensive. That uh, sounds like an awful lot of work. It, it was. I decided to do one page a day, so it took me about two months to get through it. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so is there a way for you to stay up with maybe some of the changes that go on uh, both here locally and, and across the country? Yeah, I do that through uh, a lot of times through Google Alerts because um, there's Simply put, there's too much to monitor. So I, I set up a Google alert with my account, and for, for any type of discipline that I'm looking for ideas on, like if we're talking about free dental care, I will um, get the alert so that any article that's posted online within the last 24 hours, Google will send me a link to all of those. So it's actually – uh, it takes a lot of that labor intensiveness out of out of the equation, and so it's a great tool to be uh, yes. to be utilizing. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure it's uh, as you said, it's not just a great resource for the particular individual who might need a service, but for their loved one, their family member, their caregiver as well. It, it, it's more important for the caregivers because the caregivers, you know, they have their own lives. 
that they're trying to live. They have, you know, issues with their spouse, their children. They're trying to get the kids to ballet. You know, they don't necessarily have the time to do this. So um, what I'm doing is I'm giving information to hopefully alleviate some of that strain because I've already gone through it. Uh, very important service. Tony Revere of Stuff Seniors Need. Tony, uh, listeners want more information, they can contact you how? Um, best way, StuffSeniorsNeed.com. You'll see the Contact Me page there, and you can send me any type of question or inquiry you need. Very good. And I'm Stephen Stern, partner in the law firm of David Au, David Au, Siegel & Stern, Long Island's elder law, special needs, and estate planning firm, questions, you can get me at 631-234-3030. That's 631-234-3030. You're listening to Senior Counsel here on LI News Radio. Back in a bit. We're back here on LI News Radio. You're listening to Senior Counsel. And I am partner in the law firm of David Au, David Au, Siegel, and Stern. Stephen Stern, Long Island's elder law, special needs, and estate planning firm. Uh, If you have questions uh, about elder law or estate planning issues, you can always give us a call at 631-234-3030. That's 631-234-3030. Or you can get us on the web at www.daviddowlaw.com. That's www.daviddowlaw.com. David Dow, David Dow, Siegel and Stern, where the best advice leads to lasting solutions. And uh, we're here on Senior Council speaking with Tony Revere of Stuff Seniors Need. And Tony, um, you're, of course, uh, involved in uh, Stuff Seniors Need and getting important information to, uh, to older adults and th- their families, people with special needs. Uh, but you're also involved uh, with an important organization here on Long Island. Maybe you can speak to that. Sure. Um, One of the things I I always stress to caregivers is that you really need to go out and get as much information as possible. So um, I I went to a seminar, a caregiving seminar at the West Islip Public Library, and the woman that was doing the seminar was a member of the National Aging in Place Council, the Long Island chapter. And as I spoke with her after the event and then um, I, you know, we went back and forth, I, I found that the group is specifically geared toward, it's a group of aging in place professionals. They are a, a, a group of professionals who are, who are re- really there to help my generation. They are there to help people age in place and do it in a safe and, and secure fashion where caregivers can have the peace of mind that, uh, you know, mom is okay, she's in the right spot, you know, her money's in the right spot, um, you know, she can get to and from in the house things of that nature. So it it was an organization that appealed to me because um, I had never heard of it. And when I went to the first meeting, I I saw it was just a a group of kind-hearted people who are really looking to give of their time to make sure that caregivers, they get all the advice they need and all the help they need to take care of the senior in their life. Well, it's interesting because you had said that with your experience um, uh, working with uh, Stuff Seniors Need, your Mm -hmm. your project... um, you said the information is out there. Uh, the mm-hmm. people who want to provide information, the people who want to provide assistance are out there. It's really just all about pulling it all together in a, a meaningful and effective way. And that's what the organization does. It, it does because it, what it does is it brings together experts from all different areas involved in helping people age in place. Just a, a few of the areas, you know, home health care. So let, let's say, for instance, um, You know, you don't necessarily feel comfortable leaving mom at home while you go to work. Or it's a case of where, you know, mom is living on her own, but she can't do everything anymore. You know, she can't necessarily clean. A little tough for her to make her own meals. Um, You you know, there's obviously some issues when it comes to bathing. You know, she may not necessarily want you to, you know, do the bathing for her and vice versa. So, you you know, there are home health care agencies. Um... Aging in place architecture and home renovations. This is designing a home so that um, a a senior can live in the home safely. And there are so many 
adaptations that can be made. You can widen the do uh, the uh, the hallways or, or the the doors so that a wheelchair can get in. Specifically in the bathroom, you can um, you can bow the floor down slightly so that you have a no threshold bath uh, uh, sh shower. Um, the sink. There could be a, a situation where there's no cabinet underneath it, so you can get a wheelchair under there. Uh, in the bedroom, you can add grab bars with the knurling. That's that those little grooves in, in the gr grab bar to, to enhance the traction or add a Hoyer lift. So there are so many... Um, there are so many adaptations that can be made to allow people to actually stay in the home that they've enjoyed their whole life. Um, there's elder law, which you know all, all about, you know, all, all the aspects of elder law. There are reverse mortgage specialists. Now, what a reverse mortgage is, it, it, it's exactly the way it sounds. It's a mortgage in reverse where you get the payments. And it enables people who are equity rich, you know, they may own a house that's paid off, but, you know, they're cash poor. It enables them to financially not be a burden on their family and have to go and move in with, live with, you know, their, their kids. It enables them to stay where they are, age in place. Long-term care insurance, which is going to be one of the most um, talked about things in our society as the baby boomers turn into seniors uh, and the importance of having a long-term care plan. It's not necessarily just to pay the nursing home. It's to make sure that the 40 years of your life that you spent working to pass on, you know, a, 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 to pass on uh, an endowment to your family is actually there and doesn't go to the nursing home. That's the purpose for long-term care. Um, we have mobility assistance specialists. We have downsizing specialists. A lot of seniors are in the position where physically they just don't want to cut the lawn anymore. You know, they, they don't want to deal with all, all the things that go on with dealing with, you know, a huge house. And you may not need that house anymore when the kids leave the nest. So we have people that are geared towards um, going from a home to a condo or a co-op where it's smaller. You're, um, you know, it, it, it's more comfy for them. And, you know, they have a, a spare bedroom for when the grandkids come over, you know, once every couple of weeks. But they don't need the whole house in the yard anymore. Right. You know, it's interesting because when, when you hear the term aging in place, mm -hmm. uh, most would believe that aging in place means that you are making all of perhaps the modifications, whether those are physical or bringing in outside caregivers that would allow you to remain in your home, the, mm -hmm. the, the same home that you've lived in for the past 50 or 60 years. But you're saying that that's not necessarily the case. Aging in place isn't necessarily just about the physical location in the same exact home, but it could be after a transition, after a downsize, and aging in place really means that in whatever form it takes, remaining as a part of your community. It's about being a part of your community. It's about maintaining your independence, your physical independence, your financial independence, to be able to enjoy your golden years. Um, you know, you work 40 years of your life. Uh, you, you, you don't want it to be taken up. You, you don't want to be dealing with, you know, financial burdens and, and physical burdens. There are ways that, and this is a, this is an industry that is going to be booming over the next 10 to 20 years as our, uh, demographics shift and those baby boomers become seniors, there is going to be more of an emphasis in our culture on aging in place, um, for, for a whole host and a variety of reasons, financial from the government, you know, we, we, we all hear about how social security and SSI, you know, I mean, are, are they going broke or not? Um, so, so as, as our society gets older, the, uh, organizations like the National Aging in Place Council are going to be more important to allow people to maintain more of their independence. Absolutely. We're speaking with Tony Riviere of Stuff Seniors Need. And uh, Tony, if um, listeners would like uh, to contact you and get more information, they can get you how? Uh, StuffSeniorsNeed.com. Uh, on the homepage, there's a contact me link. Just click there and you can send me any question you need. Very good. And I'm Stephen Stern, partner in the law firm of David Au, David Au, Siegel & Stern, Long Island's elder law, special needs and estate planning firm. You can get me at area code 631-234-3030. That's 631-234-3030. So, Tony, going forward then, um, mm -hmm. some of the... Some of the issues that you're dealing with most now and, and, and maybe some of the, the issues and the information that you think is going to be most helpful to not just seniors and those who would like to become seniors, but particularly their family members, their, their caregivers. How do you see it uh, all uh, going forward and, and some of the most important information that seniors should have? 
uh, quite frankly, the biggest tip, the, be- the, the most important piece of advice that I could give any single person out there listening to this is to prepare now um, because your day is coming. Uh, I-, I didn't expect it to be as early as it did for me. M- Mom was only 68 when this happened. I could not imagine that it was going to happen. You, you know, I figured I had about 10 years to wait yeah. a- a- until it happened. But you need to sit down. You, know, you-, you need to have important documents in place. That's the will, the power of attorney, the medical directives. I understand sitting down with your parents would probably be a pretty – it's a pretty rough uh, conversation. I could imagine doing it um, with my mother. You know, I mean we, we, we avoided it. You know, we didn't think it was necessary. But that conversation is a lot easier than having to go to an elder law attorney and getting legal guardianship of your, your parents when you don't have that information and you absolutely need it. So um, that would be one tip. The next tip – Know where your parents – know who their parent, uh, their doctors are. Know what medications there are. Try and find out where all their financial information is. Um, get, all the, get all the information you possibly can about being a caregiver. The National Aging in Place Council, we're going to be at the Melville Marriott on June 7th where we're going to be part of a, a symposium, an Aging in Place roundtable discussion. I would encourage everyone to, to come down here. Uh, it's, a, it's on a Saturday, so you, know, you, you don't have to rush after work. And if you need any type of help, advice, assistance in any way, um, feel free to give us a call. It's 1-888-646-1604. Uh, the number again, one 646 1604 and we will send you a list of the aging in place professionals who are best suited to helping you. And Tony, again, uh, once again, the information on the event coming up? It's going to be June 7th at the Melville Marriott. Um, it's an aging in place symposium. We will be doing a roundtable um, to help out seniors, caregivers, and, you know, all throughout Long Island. Very good. All right, Tony Riviere of Stuff Seniors Need, thank you so much for being with us uh, today. It was great having you on the program. It was great being here. Thank you very much. All right, you're listening to Senior Counsel. I'm Stephen Stern, partner in the law firm of David Dow, David Dow, Siegel, and Stern. You can give us a call at 631-234-3030. We look forward to seeing you here on LI News Radio next time.